Well, hello. My, I want to welcome you to Ministry Online Training Center, MOTC. I'm Carol Powell. I will be your instructor for the next hour as we continue our study on the Holy Spirit. Uh, before we begin, I would like to remind you also that there's a one-page response paper that's due. Um, you will write about what you learned and two, what you plan to do with the information you received today. So in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we just thank you, Father, for all that you've done for us. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen. Our lesson, as I said, will be we we'll continue on the Holy Spirit. And once you receive Jesus, you have already have the Holy Spirit. So no one needs to give him to you. Jesus is living in you right now. As Jesus is, so are you right now in this world. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. That's 1 John 4, 4, 4 17. Notice how it's this world, not the next world, not in a sweet by and by. The word says now, presently, here on earth. It's not talking about heaven in the future. As Jesus is, so are we in this world. If you look only in the physical and the soulish part to see if you're like Jesus, you'll conclude the Bible is so hard to understand. You see, on the outside, you see your bulges, your wrinkles, and all kinds of other physical uh, things, imperfections that you know Jesus doesn't have. Therefore, in your emotional, emotional realm, there's, there may be uh, depression, discouragement, anger, bitterness, and very little of God's kind of love. In light of these con contrary facts, you could wonder, how can I be as Jesus is? The born again part of you is the only feasible explanation for as Jesus is right now. So are you in this world. It's not your body, nor your soul, but your spirit that as Jesus is, what an awesome truth. Just Jesus is, so are we in this world. However, very few believers truly believe this reality. Since the spirit can't be physically seen or emotionally felt, carnal facts consistently win over spiritual truth. Without looking at themselves in God's spiritual mirror, they just submit to what they see, taste, hear, and smell, and feel. Most believers remain carnal, mind, carnal minded and experience his daily effects instead of choosing to be spiritually minded and enjoy life in peace. If you believe that you are in your spirit, just as Jesus is right now in heaven, in all of his glory, power, and perfection, your life would be revolutionized. You see, you see yourself through God's spiritual mirror. However, believing is just the first step. You must learn how to release this reality from within. Just thinking this awesome thought, awesome, just thinking this awesome thought once, once instantaneously change everything in your life. It's a process as the seed of the truth becomes firmly rooted and established in your mind. A process of understanding, growing, and maturing begins in your soulish realm. Then over time, you'll see radical changes manifest as you continue believing this truth and continue releasing God's corresponding power from within your born-again spirit. Your born-again spirit came with the mind of Christ. For, it says in 1 Corinthians 2.16, For who had known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. No one can know what the Lord is thinking. But through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, believers have insight 
into some of God's plans, thoughts, and actions. They in fact have the mind of Christ. Through the Holy Spirit, we can begin to know God's thoughts, talk with Him, and expect His answers to our prayers. An intimate relationship with Christ comes only from spending time consistently in His presence and in His Word. In your spirit, there's a mind that already knows all things. The rest of the Christian life is learning how to draw it, draw it out into the physical realm. When that happens, you experience what's called revelation knowledge, and it's an awesome feeling when you get that revelation knowledge. You were born with the natural mind. It operates both in the soulish realm and in the physical realm as, you, as your brain. When you came into this world, you didn't know anything. Your brain had some automatic functions that kicked in, like breathing and pumping, pumping uh, blood, etc., throughout your body, but your mind had to be educated. You didn't come out of the womb walking and talking. You had to train yourself to coordinate your, your muscles. This requires a lot of, lots of input. When you were born again, you received the mind of Christ in your spirit. However, your spirit mind doesn't have to be developed, trained, or taught because it was born again in perfect knowledge. You might wonder, what about 1 Corinthians 13, 9 to, through 10, which talks about only knowing in part until that which is perfect is come? So let me go over that with you. For we know in part, and we pros pro uh, prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is imperfect shall be done away with. So therefore, we ex explanation is God gives us uh, spiritual gifts in order to build up, serve, and strengthen fellow believers and the, in the fellow believers in the church. In eternity we will have perfect and complete and complete will and a complete will and will be in the very presence of God. We will no longer need spiritual gifts as they will come to an end. So that's the explanation of that, that scripture. That's referring to your natural mind and your soul, soul realm. Right now, you don't understand everything with your physical mind. You are in the process of renewing it, which won't be complete until you receive that which is perfect, your glorified body. But in your spirit, you have the mind of Christ, which is already complete. It's just not manifested in our, our brain as yet. Nobody can defend the erroneous position that 1 Corinthians 2.16 means that you have the mind of Christ right now in the physical mind. There are things the Lord Jesus knows that you simply aren't aware of in your mind, natural, in your natural mind. The Lord, the Lord knew what he was saying in the word, but you, and, but you and I are still discovering the fullness of his meaning, even in just the gospel alone. Nobody can claim total understanding and, and complete revelation because no one's actions and attitudes back it up. The question is, are you double-minded? Hmm. Your spirit mind and physical mind are two separate entities within you. When they don't agree, double-mindedness occurs. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. That's James 4, 8. And it says, James 4, 8, it says, Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. The key to the, the Christian life is training your physical, and physical mind to agree with your spiritual mind, which is the mind of Christ. 
That makes sense to me. You are spirit, soul, and body. Your born again spirit always agrees with God. Now that's pertinent. Your born again spirit always agrees with God. That's when you know you're not double minded when you're in agreement. Your body is under the influence of what is what it can see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. When your natural mind thinks the same way as your spirit mind, you're single minded. I'll read that again. When your natural mind thinks the same way as your spirit mind, you're single minded. That's when you are believing with all your heart and you see God's power manifest. However, if your physical brain thinks contrary to your spirit mind, your experience will be different than the way your spirit thinks. Your soul, specifically your natural mind, and the way you think is the determining factor. Your spirit mind always thinks the way God thinks. Your spirit mind always <coughs> thinks the way God thinks. The word perfectly represents what you think in your spirit. It's saying, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. That's Philippians 4.13. If your physical mind agrees, then you'll see supernatural power and ability uh, flow through your soul into your body, which produces results in the physical realm. But if your mind is contrary, is, but if your mind is contrary, thinking, I can't beat this addiction. This is just an example. I can't beat this sickness. I know five people who have the same condition and their doctors told them that it was hopeless for them and they could not beat the addiction or the sickness. And then, if you're in this state, then you're double-minded. A double-minded person receives nothing from the Lord. Single-mindedness brings stability, but double-mindedness causes instability. Stability means fixed in a position of firmness. Instability is lack of firmness, liability to fall, give way, or change. If you lack anything, and that's James 1, 5, 8. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it all men liberally and unbraved not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not the man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Another version of that same scripture. If you need wisdom, if you want to know what God wants you to do, ask him. And he will gladly tell you. He will not resent your asking. But when you ask him, be sure that you really expect him to answer. For a doubtful mind is as unsettled as the wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. People like, like that should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. They can't make us make up their minds. They waver back and forth in everything they do. If you have ever seen the constant rolling of huge waves at the sea, you know how restless they are. Subject to the forces of the wind, gravity, and tide, doubt leaves a person as unsettled as the restless waves. If you want to stop being tossed about, rely on God to show you what is best for you. Ask Him for wisdom and trust that He will give you and give it to you. Then you your decisions will be sure and solid. The mind of Christ is in your spirit, but your soul doesn't automatic, automatically think that way. It takes effort to renew your physical mind to agree with your spirit mind. Basically, this is where the conflict 
in the Christian life is, it's in the mind. Most believers believe the only thing that changed when they became born again was their future. Heaven instead of hell. After accepting Christ, they didn't see any change in their physical bodies and they didn't automatically perceive it in their souls either. So they concluded that the real change must just be on paper. Nothing really changes until heaven when everything will be awesome. And that's the way that some people think. But I know you don't think that way because you know you're in your word and you know better than that. Yes, the change will be complete in heaven, but right now one third of, of you is already complete. The spirit has the mind of Christ and knows all things. <laughs> If you really believe this, you wouldn't be so easily pushed into defeat, whining, saying things like, I know God can can do it, but <coughs> excuse me, but I just don't understand the things of God. You sing songs about someday it'll be better. But now I'm just a poor wafering pilgrim. Wailing and travailing. You glorify your infirmities, taking solace in the, in the fact that I'm just so inadequate. I can't experience victory until I go to be with the Lord. That's not true. You just don't realize that in your spirit, you're already a brand new person. Believe it or not, people still say these, these very things that I just said. and They say that they're well, believers. In your spirit you know all things, but ye have an unction for the Holy One, and you know all things. 1 John 2.20 When a person becomes a believer, he or she receives the Holy Spirit. One way the Holy Spirit helps the believer and the church is by communicating truth. Jesus is the truth. And that's John 14, 6. And the Holy Spirit guides believers to him. That's John 16, 13. People who are opposed to Christ are also opposed to his truth. And the Holy Spirit is not working in their lives. John 14, 6 reads, and I'll read for your benefit. Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. John 16, 13, it reads, when the spirit of truth comes, he will give you, give, guide you into all truth. He will not be presenting his own ideas. He will be telling you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. Unction, the word unction simply means an anointing a special endowment of power or an ability. The Holy One is Jesus. People don't, who don't understand spirit, okay, when I say, but ye have an unction for the Holy One. Okay, in this scripture, as I said, unction means anointing. Holy One in this scripture means Jesus. That's just an explanation. People who don't understand stand, understand spirit, soul, and body read a verse like this and throw up their hands saying, the Bible is so hard, again, to understand. I don't understand. I, can't, I can prove by my last test score that I don't know all things. They might be saying, well, I took this test and I don't know all things. I even forgot where I put my keys this morning. Hmm, that sounds familiar. After walking into the room, I couldn't remember why I was there. That sounds familiar to me. <laughs> Getting up, why did I come in here? <laughs> that proves I don't know all things. Those who only acknowledge their physical brain and soulish realm will never be able to embrace this truth from God's word. So however, in 1 John 2.20, plainly reveals that you know all things. How can this be? In your spirit, you have the mind of Christ. The Greek word for all means to the exclusion of nothing. 
This means you not only know some things or many things, but all things in your spiritual mind. And you know everything Jesus knows. You're probably asking, that's great, but what go what good does it do it does it do do for me? How do I get it out into the physical realm where I need it? First and foremost, you must believe you already have it. That's the first thing, believe you already you already have it. You have everything. You can't release something you don't really believe you have. If you waver regarding the truth that your born again spirit has the mind of Christ and knows all things, then as you put forth effort in the process of releasing this, the devil will tempt you to think what that woman is saying isn't true. The word does, doesn't mean that. This just doesn't work. And that's the stuff that you'll be seeing. The word doesn't mean that. This stuff just doesn't work. It's not true. Unless you are absolutely convinced, you'll get frustrated. That's what the devil wants you to do. You'll get frustrated. Quit before you see the manifestation of what it is you're asking for. You must believe you have the mind of Christ in your born again spirit. Even if you mess up. That's the first step. Only once you truly believe, you're on the road to manifestation. Amen. Studying God's word will draw out the wisdom that's in your spirit. When you're reading the Bible, you are receiving words with your physical eyes that are spirit and life. As you take this knowledge into your soul, new thoughts and ideas come to the physical mind. When this happens, your spirit which already has the truth and mind of Christ will bear witness with you or with it. Surely you read a scripture and felt like all of a sudden you saw it. I got it. You may have read it a dozen, even a hundred times before, but all at once, everything within you shouts, yes, that's it, I got it, okay? I know what it said, I understand. What's happening is, your spirit and your soul was, became as one. Spirit and soul in total agreement. When your soulless realm gains a truth and begins to embrace it, your spirit connects and agrees. Once the connection is made, that truth just goes off on the inside of you. That's it. It's now revelation and reality to you. Because of your inner witness, you don't necessarily need anyone else to prove it. You just know it. Several scriptures reveal this inner witness. One is Romans 8, 6. It says, The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. 1 John 5, 6, 10 also describes this specifically, but specifically verse 10, which says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. That's proof. Studying the God's word is vital for achieving single-mindedness and releasing God's power. Your spirit mind, the spirit of Christ, agrees completely with the word. Your spirit mind and the mind of Christ, they both agree completely with the word. When the truth from God's word takes root in your soul, soulish realm, that same knowledge which has already existed in your spirit mind rises up and meshes with it. They come together. This draws God's power, God's power resident within you and, and out into the physical realm. That's when you see manifestation. Believe it or not, your spirit prays. 
Praying in tongues is another powerful way to release the mind of Christ. Speaking in tongues is praying with or in the Spirit. It is our spirit speaking to God, inspired by the Holy Spirit. It takes place when a believer, a Christian believer, speaks to God. But instead of speaking in a language that he knows with his intellect, he just speaks in a child, childlike faith and trusts God to provide the form, form of the words. The regenerated human spirit, which is joined to the Holy Spirit, is praying directly to the Father. In Christ, without having to accept the limitations of the intellect, as a new life in the Spirit is expressed or exercised, in, exercised if you like, the spiritual life is built up or edified. 1 Corinthians 4, 4 says, He that speaketh in a tongue edifies himself. The word edify means to build up. Here it means to build oneself spiritually. What if I don't speak in tongues? Can I receive the Holy Spirit without speaking in tongues? It comes with the, with the package. Speaking in tongues is not the baptism is not the baptism in the Holy Spirit, but it is what happens when and as you are baptized in the Spirit, and it becomes an important resource to help you continue, as Paul says, to be, to be being, or or keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5:18. You don't have to speak in tongues in order to be saved. You don't have to speak in tongues in order to have the Holy Spirit in you. You don't have to speak in tongues to have time had to have times of feeling filled with the Holy Spirit. But and I say but if you want the free and full outpouring that is the baptism and the Holy Spirit, you must expect to it must expect it to happen as in the scripture, speaking in tongues. All I'm saying is that, saying to you is that it's up to you to get out of the boat if you want, if you want to walk on the water. I can't tell you how to walk on the water. Jesus, take, Jesus takes care of that, but I can urge you to get out of the boat get out of the ship, to take the first step on top of the waves. As far as in the flesh is concerned, a leading Bible teacher says, when Peter got out, of, out and walked on the water, the flesh, the flesh were all sitting in the boat. He had faith. He got out and walked on the water, but the flesh, the fleshy folks were still in the flesh. They stayed in the boat. The flesh is the opposite of faith. It is the old man, rebellious and sinful. It is far more fleshly to wait for God to take you over and make you do something than to trust him in simple truth to honor you as you begin to utter sounds of speech. Follow and 1 Corinthians 14, 1, 2, it says, Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. But he that speaketh in an own tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. The gift of speaking in tongues, unknown languages, was a concern of the Corinthian church because the use of the gift had caused disorder in worship. This is just additional information. Speaking in tongues is a legitimate gift of the Holy Spirit, but the Corinthians believe, believers were using it as a sign of spiritual superiority rather than as a means to spiritually unify. Spiritual gifts are beneficial only when they are properly used to help everyone. We should not ex exercise them only to make ourselves feel good. 
Additional information regarding speaking in tongues, uh, you can read more about it. Paul uh, and um, Paul makes uh, several points about speaking in tongues. One is it is a spiritual gift from God, and that's. Uh, it is also a desirable gift even though it isn't a requirement of faith. And 1 Corinthians 2, 12, 38, 31 reads, Here is a list of some of the members that God has placed in the body of Christ. First are apostles, second are prophets, third are teachers, then those who do miracles, those who have the gift of healing, those who can help others, those who can get others to work together, those who speak in unknown tongues or unknown languages. Is everyone an apostle? It reads, of course not. Is everyone a prophet? No. Are all teachers? Does everyone have the power to do miracles? Does everyone have the gift of healing? Of course not. Does God give all of us the ability to speak in unknown languages? Can everyone inter interpret unknown languages? And it says no. And in any event, you should desire the most helpful gifts. Hmm. Praying in tongues as I said, is a, another powerful way to release the mind of Christ. When you pray in the Spirit, you are speaking mysteries, and it, it's your spirit that's praying. For I pray in an unknown tongue, and my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. And that's 1 Corinthians 14, 14. This scripture shows both minds and operations. When you pray in tongues, your spirit prays, but your understanding, your soul is physical, natural realm, is unfruitful. You build yourself up by praying in tongues. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified himself. Edify means to build up, to promote spiritual growth. It's your soul that is actually growing and being built up. Because your spirit is already perfect and complete. The mind of Christ in your spirit prays when you pray in tongues. Your goal is to facilitate single-mindedness. You aren't trying to get the Word of God into your spirit because the mind of Christ already knows all things. You're trying to get God's Word into your soul so that your spirit can bear witness with it. As your soulless realm embraces the truth and agrees, yes, God, this is what I believe. I'm throwing out all other contrary thoughts and, and belief systems. This truth will now rule my life. You become of one mind. Your soul unites to your spirit's way of thinking and you're built up by drawing your spirit's wisdom and knowledge out into the physical realm. That's when you'll see God's power manifest. When you pray in tongues, your spirit prays the hidden wisdom of God. And it says in 1 Corinthians 4, 2, again, how be it in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. What are these mysteries? 1 Corinthians 2, 7 says, The wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. That's what the Apostle Paul preached. In 1 Corinthians 2, Paul described his preaching and wisdom. He didn't just use his human intellect. He but ministered God's word in demonstration of the spirit and the power and of power. 1 Corinthians 2 4. In the process of explaining this, Paul actually put down carnal knowledge, learned physical knowledge, the kind you receive from school, in favor of God's wisdom. In other words, there's a wisdom that proceeds from your born again spirit, mind of Christ. And there is a wisdom that comes from your physical brain, what somebody taught you. Since you cannot really understand the things of God with just, with just your natural mind, you must understand them through your spirit man. It's this wisdom that comes from the spirit and enables you to relate to God. Paul preached this wisdom as he invited unbelievers to believe and encouraged believers to mature. 
Paul preached the hidden wisdom of God that he received by revelation and he declared I speak with tongues more than y'all 1 Corinthians 14 18 as Paul prayed in the spirit he spoke forth God's mysteries and received revelation knowledge concerning them however he did not preach or teach in tongues Paul ministered in his native language the wisdom he received through praying in tongues. 1 Corinthians 4, 18 through 19. I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than ye all. Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that my voice I might teach others also with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also then than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. The way the Corinthians were speaking in tongues was helping this is more information and this is what Paul was writing about he said the way the Corinthians were speaking in tongues was helping no one because believers did not understand what was being said and thought that the people speaking and thought that the people speaking and thought wait a minute let me start over and did not understand what was being said and unbelievers thought that the people speaking in tongues were crazy because they were speaking and teaching in tongues to them instead of in the in the language where they could understand and um, speaking in tongues was supposed to be a sign to unbelievers as it was in Acts 2. After speaking in tongues, believers were supposed to explain what was said and give the credit to God. The Corinthians were supposed to explain what they were saying. They were speaking in tongues, but they were not explaining what was going on. The unsaved people would then be convinced of a spiritual reality. And motivated to look further into the Christian faith. While this is one way to reach unbelievers, Paul says that clear preaching is usually better. In 1 Corinthians 4 or 5, you can read more about how Paul felt about, about this. And that's 1 Corinthians 14 5. Praying in tongues when you study God's word as you do, you will release the mind of Christ into your soulless realm and through revelations. I read that. I'm not advocating speaking in tongues and then just accepting whatever comes to mind as you as being from God. No, it should line up with the word. The key is when you speak in tongues, whatever you're speaking in tongues should line up with the word of God. God will supernaturally reveal things to you through his word as a result of praying in tongues. So when, somebody, when you're speaking in tongues, again, it has to line up with what the word says. Revelation knowledge comes, comes by the Holy Spirit inside your born again spirit bearing witness in your soul with the truth from God's word. You might be reading or listening to scripture when it suddenly comes alive inside that revelation and that's happened to me that revelation oh that's what it is and it's such an awesome feeling when you get that revelation Simeon recognized the Christ child by revelation knowledge and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's, Lord's Christ and he came by the Spirit into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law then took he him up in his arms and blessed God. And that's Luke 2, 26-28. No human could have told him these things. God revealed it to Simeon through his spirit. Revelation knowledge comes from the inside out, not the outside in. You may be reading the word, studying it, looking things up in Greek, checking cross, cross references, reading or listening to someone else's opinion of what the word says. But then, all of a sudden, 
the mind of Christ in your born again spirit reaches up from inside and grabs the truth shouting yes that's this is true this one is for you that's revelation knowledge you have to know for yourself you go into the word yourself to find out what what the truth is when you pray in tongues you can believe God for interpretation first Corinthians 4 13 says wherefore let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret this verse primarily addresses the need for interpretation of a publicly given tongue in a church service but you can believe God for interpretation when you're praying in the spirit private privately as well praying in tongues benefits you whether you believe for interpretation or not it relieves stress and releases the peace of God into your soul and body Amen. Isaiah 28, 11, 12 says, For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest with wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. It builds you up and promotes spiritual growth. 1 Corinthians 2.9 is often misused and it says, But as it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Many people read and say, this contradicts what you're teaching. It shows that you can't really know the things of God. This verse proves that he's mysterious and you can own and you can't really know. Don't stop there. Keep reading the next verse. So you read part of it, but read the next part. It says, But God had revealed them, revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yet the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of the man which is which is in him even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God we have the mind of Christ 1st Corinthians 2 10 through 12 and 16 1 Corinthians 2.9 contrasts Old Testament saints who couldn't understand with New Covenant believers who know all things in their spirits. In this verse, Paul quoted an Old Testament scripture, which is Isaiah 16.4. And that scripture was, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard heard nor perceived by the ear neither have the eye seen O God besides thee what he has prepared for him that water waiteth for him old covenant people weren't born again so they didn't have born again spirits because of this it's totally accurate to say that they couldn't understand the things of God to them it's foolishness because they have to be spiritually discerned. However, it is inaccurate to say the same thing about a New Testament believer who has the mind of Christ in their born again spirit. You can understand the things of God. 1 Corinthians 2.14 reads, But he, but the natural man, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know it them, because they are spiritually discerned. However, it's inaccurate to say the same thing about a New Testament believer 
as I said before, who has the mind of Christ in their born again spirit. Just because you pray in tongues and ask God for inter interpretation doesn't mean you should accept any and every thought that comes to your mind as being from God. There's a recipe for disaster. disaster. You must judge every thought by the word of God. And again, again, the key is judge everything by the word of God. The spirit and the word always agree. And that's 1 John 5, 7. The spirit and the word of God always agree. They never disagree. Because God's word never contradicts spiritual truth. Whether you are praying in tongues and believing for interpretation or not, whatever the thoughts that are contrary to the word flash across your mind, you should immediately, immediately conclude that's not God. If it's not in agreement with the word, then it's not God. Paul rebuked the Corinthians for using the gifts of the Holy Spirit carnally. His comments in uh, Corinthians 12, 13, and 14 were corrections regarding the proper use of gifts, especially speaking in tongues. Therefore, just because you are praying in tongues doesn't guarantee that they are completely pure and fully inspired by the Holy Spirit. Your flesh could be a factor. However, if you stay within these biblical boundaries, you will be able to satisfy, receive much revelations from the Lord. As you pray in tongues and ask for interpretation, thoughts will come and all of a sudden you'll say, I've never seen that before. Then as you, at, then as you verify it in more than just one obscure place in the Bible, it becomes an obvious truth to you. God has imparted perfect wisdom and complete revelations into your born again spirit. Hmm. Wisdom is a principal thing, therefore, get wisdom and with all by getting, get understanding. Wisdom and understanding are keys that will unlock everything else in, in life you need. Therefore, draw on that wisdom and receive understanding so that the floodgates of your soul will open up to allow God's truth already in spirit to manifest in the physical realm. Yes, you can live a fruitful and fulfilled Christian life. Without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, you won't be able to fully release all of these wonderful realities already present in your born again spirit. That's why the baptism, baptism in the Holy Spirit is so important. Jesus needed the baptism in the Holy Spirit. He was born as, as God in his spirit and as a man in his soul and body. He was complete in his spirit while on the earth in his physical body. However, Jesus didn't do any miracles until he received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Luke 3, 21, 22, 4, 1, 14. Since the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one, they don't operate independent of each other. The Holy Spirit is one who releases the wisdom and revelation of God. He comforts, teaches, and reminds. John 14, 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your rem remembrance, whatsoever I have said to you. He guides, he guides into all truth, listens, speaks, shows things to come, glorifies Jesus and receives of him and shows it by revelation to you. In John 16, 12 to 14 it says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall be speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and, she, and he shall show it to you. Apart from the Holy Spirit, you won't have access to all God has placed within you. When you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the ability to pray in tongues comes with it. As you pray in the Spirit, you draw and release the wisdom that, that's in the born again part of you. 
It's not the only way, but it's certainly one of the primary ways. It's essential that you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is a second separate experience from salvation. You are endowed with power by the Holy Ghost and the gift of speaking in tongues, which will help you operate this power. When you pray in tongues, you build yourself up. But it's much more than just an emotional uh, lift. It helps you release the wisdom of God within you. Even if there were no other results, which there are, there would certainly be enough. Speaking in tongues produces tremendous spiritual benefits. Some groups overemphasize speaking in tongues when people first receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit and under un unemphasize the benefits to the believer's life there, thereafter. Due to this, many who receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit only spoke in tongues once or twice to prove that they had it. However, they didn't know that there were other benefits, so they hadn't really used the gift since. They also have been missing out on tremendous benefits speaking in tongues brings to their daily life. If, you're, if you aren't baptized in the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, you're really missing out. In fact, you're probably frustrated and powerless in Christ. Receiving the Holy Spirit will help you experience His love more than you ever ever before and make His power avail available to you besides the Lord Himself. Commanded, receive ye Holy Ghost. Will you obey? If you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you need to either go to someone who already has or directly seek the Lord in prayer about it. So therefore, your born again spirit came with the mind of Christ. For who had known the mind of Lord of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. In your spirit, there's a mind that already knows all things. The rest of the Christian life is learning how to draw it out into the physical realm. When that happens, you experience what's called revelation knowledge. You were born with a natural mind. It operates both in the soulish realm and in the physical realm as your brain. Your natural mind has to be educated and trained. When you were born again, you received the mind of Christ in your spirit. Your spirit mind doesn't have to be developed, trained, or taught because it was born again in perfect knowledge. The mind of Christ in your spirit is already complete. Your spirit mind and physical mind are two separate entities within you. When they don't agree, double-mindedness occurs. Purify your heart, ye double-minded, James 4, 8. The key to a Christian life is training your physical mind to agree with your spirit mind, which is the mind of Christ. Your spirit mind always thinks the way God thinks. The perfect rep the word perfectly represents what you think in your spirit. If you, if your physical mind agrees, then you'll see supernatural power and the ability flow through your soul into and into your body, which pr produces results in the physical realm. If your physical mind disagrees, then you're double-minded and you will receive nothing from the Lord. Single-minded is bring stability, but double-minded causes inability. The mind of Christ is in your spirit, but your soul doesn't automatically think that way. It takes effort to renew your physical mind to agree with your spirit mind. So basically, this is where the conflict in the uh, believer's life is, is in the mind. In your spirit, you know all things, but you have an unction on from, from the Holy One, and you know all things. Unction, as I said before, simply means an anointing, a special endowment of power or an ability. The Holy One, as I said before, is Jesus. All means the exclusion of nothing, so there's nothing missing. In your spiritual mind, you know everything Jesus knows.
And that will conclude our lesson on the Holy Spirit. I pray that this has been a blessing and an uh, education for you as well as it has been an education for myself. And in the name of Jesus, I just thank you and continue to bless you in every realm and every uh, aspect of your life. In Jesus' name, amen.